Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden video. So today I actually have two fun salvias to plant. Salvia is one of my all-time favorite plants because it gives you those tall, fun blooms that things like hummingbirds love. And typically they are annuals or in our zone, the perennials. They come back for us a lot of the time. So they're a great bang for your buck and they give you continuous blooms because my goal is always to get as many blooms per plant as physically possible. While sometimes you have to get a plant that doesn't bloom the entire season, it, as many blooms as possible is what we're going for. So I am really, really, really excited about these. So this is the Proven Winners Unplugged Pink Salvia. And I have seen these online for years. Laura with Garden Answer uses them. So do a few other people that I really enjoy, like Janie from Dig Plant Water Repeat, but I had never seen any in my area. So I popped over to my nursery today for literally one lavender plant and was shocked to see an entire flat of these. So it was very good. I only bought three, but they are an annual, except in zones, I just read it, 9A through 11B. So they may come back for us here. We are zone 8B. So if we have a mild winter, a lot of times these kind of um, hardy perennials or hardy annuals will come back for us. If we have too much freeze, they won't. We don't get that many freezes at all. And honestly, we get very few frosts even. So I think they will come back for us for at least a few years. They probably won't come back for me forever. I'm actually replacing a plant here, which is the Steely Blue Angel Faced Angelonia. I'll put a picture up, but I've had it around my little um, shepherd's hook for several years and two of the plants are coming back. The other three are not. So I've had five here and I really like the Angelonia. Um, but if all five are not coming back, that does not help me. Um, <laughs> and it is another hardy annual. I bought it thinking it was fully an annual and it has come back for three summers for me. So if it doesn't come back this year, that's still two summers more than I was planning to get out of it. So I'm going to put three of these unplugged pinks around this little shepherd tuck taking into account the two angel faced angelonias that may come back. We'll see what happens there. Um, but if they do come back, they can play nicely with this pink. So these are a really fun, they look almost purple, but they are a pink bloom. And the fun part about them is that the calyx, the part of the plant that is not a bloom, is also a dark purplish color. And so even when they're not in bloom, which you can see a lot of this plant is not open yet, it still looks really pretty. And so while you can deadhead it to encourage more blooms, even if you don't get to deadheading it, you still have color on the plant. On the other hand, I found these little guys at the nursery. So you can tell whenever my nursery has these little purple cans, these are plants that they have seeded themselves and are growing on and selling. They're, they're fine plants, but they're not, you know, they're not proven winners. These are going to be more of a true annual and you one and done for us, but they sell them at such a good price. I got an entire flat of foxgloves and these little purple cans from them last year. And almost the entire flat is coming back because they're biannuals and they're huge this year. So I got them for $2.49 last year and this year they're huge foxgloves. Two of them are already blooming. I will show you when we go down that way. So I got six of these. These are the Victoria White Salvia. They get 18 to 20 tall and 12 to 15 wide. The unplugged pink get 14 to 30 high and 12 to 20 wide. So the unplugged pink is going to get about 30 inches and the white is going to get about 20 inches. So my plan is I'm going to put three of the unplugged pink around the shepherd's hook and then I've got a little spot on the right and a little spot on the left that I had mums last year. And the mums, again, they came back. We had a really hard freeze this last year. So 
they came back for a year or two, but this freeze we had this year, just it took out almost all of my hardy annuals, things that won't last through a freeze. So I'm gonna pop one of these on either side, and I think that will be really pretty if the two angel faces that are these front two do come back, then we will have a mix of the purple, the blue and white, the white salvia, and then this white, um, this is a Proven Winners White Night Sweet Alyssum up front. So I think that'll be really pretty. Uh, and we're just gonna kinda let whatever grows grow and see how it looks. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. I also bought, um, I bought six of these total. So I'm putting two here and then I spread the other four throughout the rest of the garden down um, to the left of me, your right, my left, because I have a couple spots down that are more part shade, part sun, not quite to the shade garden, that are just kind of weird blank spots this portion of the garden and right on the other side of the steps is my like almost full sun parts of the garden and then it starts getting part shade and then gets shade so sun passes over and i've got trees on that side so i needed a few plants to tuck into some of these weird spots where i'm noticing it just goes from like packed with plants in color to sparse so I'm gonna tuck four of these into some of those weird spots and they will just give us some tall height and color in those spots that will be really pretty and they should perform really well because salvia is awesome. I'll show you, I have, I put three of these in, small ones that I found early in the season. They were like the first thing I planted back in, like the first week of March. It's almost the last week of April now and they're already huge. So there you go. I also bought, um, a few of these little cans of pentas. Again, my pentas are hardy annuals here. <laughs> three of them came back, three did not. So I bought a replacement three and I'm just gonna pop those in. So I'm not gonna make y'all watch me plant every single one of these. I will probably plant up this area on camera and then go plant the rest of them off camera and then show y'all where everything ended up because it's like one here one there I'd have to move the camera every five seconds so let's go ahead we're current trying to beat the heat because the sun is going down I want to get these in the ground and go eat dinner let's do it y'all don't have to be so destructive now all right so the plant you just fell into is one of my two blooming, coming back, steel-faced blue angelonias. It's the better one, thanks y'all. But you can see that green at the bottom. See how it does, cause it's just, Typically by now it would be putting on quite a bit more growth. So I'm gonna put one of these here, one there, put this little guy there. These three back here are the ones that are just not putting out any green. I'm not 100% convinced they're alive. I cut these back last year and then all these weeds are finally done. This one has green, but I'm just, I'm honestly not 100% convinced that what's coming back is Angelonia and not um, weeds that just found their way to the same spot.
All right, so the question is, do I put this guy here? Get these guys planted. All right, let's get these guys planted. have great roots. <laughs> I have to tear through some of them just to get them out of the little cans. They were probably ready to be bumped up. Oh yeah, look at that. It's crazy. Oh, she's going to be very happy. Alright. Grow, little guy. Grow. All right, let's see. We need the auger. Mm -hmm. Oh, these have good roots too. It's really good. Hopefully that means all of these will do really well. Plant version of live, laugh, love. Move it or lose it.
So we've got one, two, three unpug unpugged, unplugged pink, my two whites. These two Angelonia appear to be coming back. I wish they were like here, but you know, if they live, they live. Now, if I knew I was going to be doing three of these instead of five, because they usually is a whole ring, but I don't want to buy five especially not knowing about the Angelonia, I would have done four of these guys across the front and spaced them more in between. So like here, 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 and here. But you know what? I think it's really pretty. I think it will be really nice layering all the way up around my little shepherd's hook. Obviously, I am still working on the entire shed area including my milkweed, which is covered by this umbrella. But in the meantime, quick look at this little minute. So these are the salvia that I planted the beginning of March. And look how big they are now. And it is not even, you know, it's not even close to the middle of the season, let alone the end of the season. So these little guys will all get much bigger as the season goes on. Hopefully the Angelonia will come back, but. So let's go ahead and pop down here. I will show you where we planted everything else. You gonna lead the way, Betty? Come on. Good job. We started around the crepe myrtles. You can see right here is one of the pintas that's coming back from last year. So I popped in one, two little other pintas where the other two did not come back. <laughs> and that is, that's one of those unnecessary little things, but I just love that little sweet ring of pink around the crepe myrtle. So from here, popped down and this is what I was talking about this kind of from this crepe myrtle over has a lot more plants a lot more green partially because the lambs ear in the sun down here does really well as a ground cover whereas down towards the shade tree it starts getting more and more sparse so I popped in one salvia here just to kind of help tie everything together because I didn't want salvia down there salvia down there and nothing here so you can see i have this big open space under this laura pedlum which probably needs to be limbed up a little but um popped one there good job biddy and then under this crepe myrtle we did some work so first of all these are three of the fox gloves that are coming back from last year they're biannual and these were those tiny little purple cans last year. And this year, first of all, the plants are huge, but second of all, they're the first foxgloves blooming in my garden. So I have more, there's one there. There's a couple tucked in throughout here. 
There's a couple tucked in down that way, but these three first ones. So we've got one salvia, two salvias. Right back here, you can see a penta coming back. And then I popped in one, two additional pentas. So that will kind of all grow together. And last but not least, we have our last little white sylvia right over here. Past a few more of those foxglove. Look at this one. This was a tiny purple can last year. So was this one. So this year I actually grew a lot of foxglove from seed. Um, you can see those. There's one here. There's one right over here. So I am trying to really just dot those everywhere. But you can see like just so much sparser on this side where the lambs ear are small. <laughs> These are all lambs ear from last year. They're just, they don't love their life as much as the ones down in the sun. But that's okay. We have a whole field of zinnias seeded here. And they, they will be big eventually. This is actually a salvia. This is a red wine salvia and it is a perennial and it has these gorgeous burgundy color blooms i just had to cut back the first flush and he will bloom for us again but that'll be pretty so hopefully just these few salvia tucked in will give us some more color some more height some more fullness and obviously we just, sometimes you just have to wait. It's still the beginning of the season. A lot of these things are still leafing out. Can't go from zero to 60 in five minutes. A lot of gardening I have learned and I'm still working on is just being patient. So these little tiny salvias, these little pentas, they will grow. They will be fabulous this year. Some will come back next year and we'll just keep, you know, just keep adding to the garden until eventually there is no more dirt. <laughs> but a lot of these things, like even these, these bubble gums will grow together. But, you know, that's a season-long endeavor. It's not going to happen. It's only April. Not going to happen the first month. So I'm very, very, very excited about these unplugged pink salvia. I have been hoping to find some of those. And to find the white salvia for $2.49 was a steal. The three that I planted down around that tree were $7.78. And they were a bit bigger, but they were still pretty small. $7.78. So, score! I will see y'all later. If you want to go back last year and check out the fox gloves that I planted, these ones last year in those tiny purple cans, I'll link that video right here. Go watch it. You know you want to.